Hello, this is Mother Bear Dodie again, and I've got a different camera angle, and I think I'm going to be able to show you how I do the ears. I've got this bear all finished, and by the way, if you're interested in finding out more about the Mother Bear Project, I'll put a link down below, and you can learn all about it, and you can make bears for them too. I've I work and around so I've got four needles here now see I'm already out of frame gotta keep it down here so bear with me ha <laughs> ha bear with me the first thing I want to do is make sure I have plenty of stuffing in there and then I'm going to switch and there may be an easier quicker way to do this but I haven't found it I'm gonna put all my stitches on each side onto one needle and then eventually I'm going to combine those two needles and I'm going to just knit across because there's nothing I like less than sewing so I am not going to sew a seam if I can do it without sewing so get these switched over. Oh, and I could point out too, although I've already done it, in order to make the ears seem a little round on top instead of pointed, which I prefer, the very last round I knitted, I knit two together, or purl two together in this case, because I've used purl stitches for the ears. At the end of each uh, set of stitches, and that will just give you a little round um, ear when we get all done. So now we've got those together and um, if the stitches are kind of loose, especially right here, I like to tighten it up some. I do a lot of that. I'd probably get twice as many bears done if I didn't spend all my time tightening stitches. But that's just how I do it, so. And it seems to work. Am I still in the frame? Why, yes I am. Now I hope this is just as easy to see from the side. The last time I had the camera between me and my work, and I could see the viewfinder all right, but oh my goodness, it was awkward. And it ended up that I had the uh, my work way too close to the camera and it was quite fuzzy. So I'm hoping that this one will be a little better. And if not, well, I'll knit another bear and we'll try it again. So, get these all snugged up because I don't want the bear's stuffing to fall out his ears or in case this, this bear is going to be a girl her ears. I must work really loose because, man, I can really take up a lot of slack here when I tighten these up for the last go-round. I guess I am just a relaxed, loose knitter. Some people seem to knit so tight they can barely slide the stitches on the needles, but not me. And that, by the way, is why I use wooden needles instead of metal because metal needles, they just fall off constantly. These wooden needles, bamboo actually, I think, have a little bit of a grip, and I like that. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do, put that out of the way, is I'm gonna transfer these stitches onto one needle. So, doesn't matter where you start, but you need to be consistent. In other words, I, I slip one from the back, one from the front, one from the back, one from the front. And I think people do this sometimes and just can knit them together off of two needles, and I haven't really tried that because I'm kind of klutzy, so I figure it wouldn't work. So this is a little extra step, but then it, it makes it easier for me. Back, front, back back, front. Uh oh, I hear the kitty cats. I 
wish I was faster at this, but I've never been fast at anything. So I'm definitely not ever going to be Lily Chen, that's for sure. But I have fun, so. And now I can feel the difference. Everything's really tight where I, where I tighten up those stitches. But that's okay because I, I want the top seam to be tight. We're almost there. And then we're going to just knit across. And that will be how we complete the seam. Now right here is where I always bumble around and lose my stitches because like I said I'm kind of klutzy. I'm still amazed to this day that I even learned how to do this because let me tell you it wasn't easy. Everything I do that has a physical aspect to it is a struggle. There now. Can we see that? Come on. Yeah, we've got everything on one needle. So now I'm going to, um, as you can probably see here, what I've done to, and I do this usually on the ears, after a certain point I start to do purl stitches. So you have the triangle that's going to be the ear, and what I'll do is I'll just sew right along there and tighten it up to make the ears, and they will look a little different than this down here with the stockinette stitch. So it kind of just makes them stand out and look different. So let's get this, this done up. Poor little bear. Normally the bear's on my lap and I don't have to squish her down like this. Because I've purled here, I'm going to purl just, just where the ear is and then across the head I'm going to knit. And, uh, okay. Hopefully this won't be quite as long as the video I did the other day, but, oh, we're, we're just binding off. We're not knitting a row all the way across, we're binding off. So I do a stitch and then I pull this one over. And it's going to look really weird when you're done until you get the ears gathered up. And the first time I made one of these, I thought, oh my god, this will never look right. <laughs> but it does. So now I've gotten past the ear part, and now I'm just into the forehead, and I'm going to knit the rest of these till I get back to the other ear. And if, here I'll show you the, the back, what I've done is I've done in garter stitch, and it was ready for the next, uh, row of bumps here so by me knitting this that will continue on up in in the way it would have if I had knitted uh, another or purled another row and sometimes I may complain without any just all stockinette stitch just kind of depends on what mood I'm in and how much I want to think So you can probably see why it takes me so long to make a bear. I know one of the mother bears said she can make a bear in three hours, and I have no idea. She's probably just a blur because it takes me a total of anywhere from 12 to 14 hours, depending on the finishing details, how much work that is. So, no, I'm not speedy. Uh, but I do this for relaxation, so I don't want to hurry. We're almost over here to the other ear. And uh, let's see, one more, one more knit, one more knit. And then we're going to purl the rest of the way across. Tighten that dude up just a little bit. Just a little bit. There we go. I feel like I might be a little close to the camera again. And um, 
when you get down here to the end, I don't know if other people have trouble with this, but I do. I have a problem with stretching when I change needles when I'm working in the round or when I get to the end of a row if I'm working with straight needles. So I'll try really hard here to uh, bring that last loop over. Oops. 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 Without stretching it too much. There we go. And I'm going to just pull the yarn through and I'm going to uh, get my scissors here and what do I need? I always leave plenty of yarn because I hate it when I run out. So I've I've got there you, you can see it's it's quite a bit it's a it's a couple of couple of feet. So now what I'm going to do to this funny looking bear is I'm going to take this yarn, we're going to stitch across, pull tight, and it will cinch up the ears like this. And then we'll go over here and we'll do the same thing. And then it's going to look like a real bear instead of a funky bear with a little pointy head. And this is, uh... oh dear. I can't see what I'm doing. There we go. Yeah, there we go. I will uh, put, a, put a couple stitches through here a few times just to make sure it's anchored and nothing's going to slip later because I don't want the ears to uh, go out of shape. So now that we've got that good and tight, we're going to put the needle inside the bear, just kind of stick it in there anywhere, and it's going to come out over here at the top. <clears throat> and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do few stitches to anchor it here so that when I when I pull from here to there it's going to gather up but it's not going to pull this part in so probably about three three good snug stitches will take care of it and then now we're ready for the tedious part. <clears throat> and I just flip the bear back and forth because I can never hit the right spot. We basically want to just follow this line that's created here where we have the separation between the um, reverse stockinette or garter stitch. Is that right? No, no, this is garter stitch. This is reverse stockinette and then this is the garter stitch. Yeah, you, you got to just watch what I'm doing, don't listen to what I say, because sometimes my mouth doesn't work right. Okay, so I'm going to put this through, and then I'll turn it over, and if it's not right where I wanted it, I'll adjust that a little. And we're just going to make a little running stitch across here. Now on this side especially, if, I don't know if you can see it, it's a little easier to see. It's kind of each row you go in the center of the stitch, and you just go down a row each time. So I'm going to go back through there and sure enough it's too low so I'm going to move that up up there. And we're not going to tighten this until we get to the end. Um, there we go. Well I'm sure glad my Grace Kitty is entertaining herself and not up here trying to knock over the camera. It's always amazing to me when it happens. Let's see. Because usually my kitties want to be right in the middle of what I'm doing, helping, you know. They're good little helpers. And 
and uh, I didn't point that out, but when I stuffed it, I, I left, I didn't put a lot of uh, any stuffing right here in the ear because we want the ear to be flat. So we kind of have the stuffing just up to there. I suppose you could make a fat ear if you wanted to, and that might be a little different look. Hi, Gracie. Do you want to come be in the video? Hi. We're making a new bear here, Gracie. She's my little gray kitty. That's why her name is Gracie. We'll let you make a cameo at the end, Gracie. How's that? Yeah, you can say hi to the folks. Mm. Sometimes it's really hard to tell. Do I want here or there? I didn't... I should have picked a lighter color, but I try to make most of my bears either brown or gray, even though lighter colors are easier to work with because I don't see real well with the dark ones. Okay, we're almost ready to gather, and then it's going to look like an ear. Okay, so now we have it, and we're going to pull on that until it gathers up, and we get it just the way we want. We might want it a little bit wider, and then we're going to anchor this real well right here. probably make three or four stitches here because I'm I'm kind of obsessive about these things I don't want it to come loose and so now what I'm going to do is put the needle back inside the bear's head and just kind of run it across inside over to the opposite side And we're going to start. We're going to do the exact same thing we did before. And it's the same process. So I think that I will end this video so it won't be so long. But you can see how now it's looking like a little bear. And sometimes if I've made this part too loose, I will take this extra long string that's left, go down here, and make a running stitch around a couple times and kind of gather up the neck a little bit. And then sometimes I just slip stitch around here with, for the top of the shirt to uh, stabilize the neck. And that is how you make bear ears. Here. That's it. Bye-bye.